Okay, now we're going to take a look at example four, which quite frankly is a terrible example. It's horrible. I don't know why anyone would write this down and put it in a book. <laughs> it's just the worst example of, of uh, induction that you could have come up with. But there are some interesting things about it. So I don't think it's a good example of induction because it kind of just goes nowhere and you never really get the resolution of a problem. But you know, it, it does have some interesting things for us to talk about, right? So I, so I am going to go through it. Um, let's start with our function here. Uh, our, our, re our recursive function f of k is defined as f of k minus 1 plus 2 times f of k minus 2 plus 3 times, or excuse me, plus f of k minus 3. And our base cases for f of 0 is 1, f of 1 is 2, f of 2 is 4. Let's, let's plug a few numbers into this just to see how it works out. Um, so f of 3 is the smallest one we need to calculate because uh, 0, 1, 2 are all base cases. So that's going to be f of 2 plus 2 times f of 1 plus f of 0, which is going to be 4 plus 2 times 2 plus 1, which is going to be 9. So f of 3 is 9. f of 4 is going to be f of 3 plus 2 times f of 2 plus f of 1. So that's 9 plus 2 times 4 plus 2. Uh, 9 plus 8 is 17, plus 2 is 19. And on down, you know, it's a recursive function. It has a base case, in this case three base cases, and a recursive definition, right? Now, what's interesting about example 4 is we're not trying to figure out a solution to this. Well, we don't really need to. It's a function. It's There's no solution. It is defined the way it is defined. What we want is a boundary. That is, we want to know that what is the upper limit of f of k. Um, that is, we want to know f of k will always be less than or equal to r raised to the power of k for some value r. What is that r? That's the question. So if we think of it in graphing terms, uh, our r sub k will always be greater than our f of k. Excuse me, our r raised to the k will always be greater than our f sub k. That's what we're looking for. What is the r that makes that true. Okay, so what could that value of r be? Well, can't be zero, because zero raised to anything is zero. Can't be one, because one raised to anything is still one. So our smallest whole number that we could deal with is, that we could possibly have is two. Um, and two looks like it, it might work, uh, right? F of one is two, so it, it is possible uh, from that point to work. So. Let's, let's say in our hypothesis here, r equals 2. Let's try it out for f of 0, right? f of 0 is 1, uh, r raised to the 0, anything raised to the 0 power is 1, um, right? So that is less than or equal to r sub 0, so we're okay there. f sub 1 is 2. Let me, let me replace r with our 2 value here. So 2 raised to the 1 power is 2, which is less than or equal to 2. So we're okay with f sub 1. Uh, when k is 2, then we're talking about 4. 2 raised to the 2 is 4. So, so far, so good. Now, 
our inductive hypothesis is going to be that f of n minus 1 is less than 2 to the n minus 1. Right? Um, and also, f of n minus 2 is going to be less than 2 to the n minus 2. And f of n minus 3 is going to be less than or equal to 2 to the n minus 3. That's, that's a given. That's our inductive hypothesis. We are assuming that to be true. Based upon that, we're going to, we, we want to prove our inductive step, which is that f of n is less than or equal to 2 to the n. So this is our inductive step. Uh, this we assume to be true. Okay, so improving our inductive, let me draw a line here to kind of separate these. Improving our inductive hypothesis, we're going to say that uh, f of n is equal to f of n minus 1 plus 2 times f of n minus 2 plus f of n minus 3, which is just our function definition. Now that is less than or equal to 2 to the n minus 1 plus 2 times 2 to the n minus 2 plus 2 times, or plus 2 to the n, oops, n minus 3. Again, this is all by definition so far. Um, this, if we do a little algebra, this kind of reduces down to 2 to the n minus, excuse me, 2 to the n plus 2 to the n minus 3. But that's not our hypothesis. Our hypothesis, or, or that's not what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that f of n is less than or equal to 2 to the n. But then we end up with this extra bit on the end, which cannot be equal to, to 2 to the n, right? 2 to the n plus 2 to the n minus 3 can never be equal to 2 to the n. Therefore, we cannot prove our inductive step, right? And it makes sense if we plug in f to the 3, which was 9, we're saying that's less than equal to 2 to the 3, but 2 to the 3 is 8. That's not true. So it fails for the value 3 and for quite a few other values. So we know that 2 cannot be the value for r, right? 2 cannot be the value for defining our boundary. Um, well, what is the value? <laughs> uh, they do a little bit of math for you, and they tell you that the smallest number that it could be is 2.148. If we're dealing with integers, 3 would work as well. Um, but that's not really the important thing. The important thing is that you, you understand what it looks like when you can't prove something is true per that inductive step. So we assume the hypothesis is true. We assume that... Uh, f of n minus 1 is less than or equal to 2 to the n minus 1, and the same with uh, n minus 2, n minus 3. When we plug that into our, our step, it doesn't work out. Um, I, I think that is an important point because induction is kind of wonky, and understanding it means understanding when it doesn't work. Okay, So uh, that's example four. If you have any questions, ask them in the forum below.